Alrighty, it's time to cut this monster open. It's probably about the biggest compressor I've actually had. Biggest hermetic compressor that is. It's three phase, 415 volt, which comes in there. And uh, I think that's your discharge, and that's your suction, obviously, because that's the biggest. There aren't any other ports on it. Got an oil bleed off here. There's no pressure in this, by the way, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have it. But uh, I'm going to cut it about here, just in the middle, as there's a weld down there. And so I'm going to cut just above that, probably about 5 mil and uh, that way I'll be able to get this top off without contaminating it and we can have a look at what's inside okay well I got this open long last and it's actually a full cylinder radial compressor you can see the pump heads down there, the cylinder heads I mean that's your discharge line there, so I'm going to have to cut that. But it appears the pump is actually suspended by the top half of the casing, not the bottom half like they normally are. I've never ever seen that before on a compressor, but it means there may be a bit more uh, grinding work for me in terms of getting this out. <laughs> Just my luck. Because there's no way it actually attaches to the, the bottom of this um, this casing. So on the manual ops, big MTZs, the top will just pop off once you cut through it. You cut through that thickness there so you don't contaminate the insides and then the top normally will just pull straight off. But here it's a whole different kettle of fish, I think. Maybe more grinding work involved. Okay, well the top actually came off of this quite a bit easier than I first anticipated. I only had to sever the discharge line and it just dropped straight off it. And, um, I was wrong about it being suspended by the top part of the casing. These take the uh, the side to side movements of the pump. There's a big spring at the bottom. I can feel this. It's resting on it right now. And then there's one in the top here, which is this one. I don't know if we'll be able to get it out, but that's what that is there. And then these two brackets. I basically take the swaying motion of it, I'm guessing. Because it's just sitting sideways here because there's nothing supporting it. But I think maybe the next one, if I do get another one of these, I'll just cut it about there, sort of thing. I know I've got shocking videoing conditions at the moment. It's way over exposed. A big light bulb up in the sky there is uh, kind of annoying me a bit. But oh well, got to push on. Ah, uh, so yeah. It is a four cylinder radial, there's four cylinders there. I really hope this pump's all right because I might uh, be able to have a bit of fun with that. But um, motor's not massive. I thought the motor would be a bit bigger than that, but there you go, it's, again, the, uh, the load amps are, um, or locked rotor amps there is 104. So it draws a fair bit, but it's, again, it's 460 volt three phase. Um, I think I can see why it's failed as well. It may have actually seized up because there's not a lot of oil in there. So uh, it may have actually thrown a rod or something and seized up. Hopefully not. So like I said, I do want to try and rescue this, but... Now for the fun bit, which is to get this out of this casing. See how well we can do that. Okay, well, I've got the pump out. Wasn't too hard actually. I. Uh, just made up a bit of a harness out of some uh, chain and just wrapped that around it and just lifted it out by hand very carefully. Bend your knees, not your back, and uh, got it down onto the trolley. I'm going to take it inside and actually pull it apart so we can see it properly. But uh, going by the little flakes of metal in the, um, the base of this, the crankcase, well, there's quite a large piece here. I'm guessing is actually thrown a rods maybe and seized up because I took the end off as well in the motor you can't turn it over at all it's seized solid so something pretty bad's gone on inside this compressor it was all black and nasty 
it's pretty horrible. So uh, I was hoping to be able to actually filter this oil and reuse it since it's mineral oil. We don't get much of that. Polyester's the, the horrible stuff because it absorbs moisture. Mineral oil doesn't. So uh, I was hoping to use it, but since it's this colour, I don't think it will be. Unless I really can be bothered filtering it, which I don't think so. Just ditch it and keep using the old paraffin for them, that works fine. But, uh, anyway, let's get this in and get it apart. Okay, well this is getting more and more interesting. I've got the, uh, the end housing out and the bottom bearing, which has definitely got a few score marks on it, but it wasn't the point of failure. But uh, you look up in there, and that's not a conventional piston and crankshaft assembly. That is called a Scotch yoke. Basically, it uses a bar which just oscillates. You've got this little block here which at is attached to the crankshaft and rotates. And then this is all part of the uh, piston conrod. Piston's up inside there, which I can see little broken chunks of metal in there. And this just reciprocates with, along with the piston while that rotates and oscillates inside. And that's how you achieve your uh, conversion of rotary motion to reciprocating motion. They're very similar to what's used in the original Danfoss SC15 uh, domestic refrigeration compressors. They had exactly the same thing but on a miniature scale. In this case, you've got two pistons attached onto the one yoke, and then you've got another two attached to another yoke going in the opposite direction. So, it basically can rely on a single uh, crankshaft eccentric, doesn't have four separate ones or something like that, like the, uh, the manual ops do. And again, I've never seen that used in a uh, a large commercial, like heavy commercial, light industrial compressor, which is what this is. So uh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna take these heads off, and we'll have a look at what's actually happened to the pistons, and I might see if I can actually get them out. That'd be nice if I could. Okay, well, I managed to get the pistons out and all the heads off, and basically the whole thing apart. Took the motor stator off as well, which was a massive. Uh, task in its own with the angle grinder. That's 12mm thick steel I had to cut through by the way in order to uh, get that out because it was pressed in. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of techniques I tried to get that off first just using a, uh, putting a slit in it and then using a screwdriver to see if I could lever it out enough to separate it. That didn't work so I ended up just cutting big sections out. Didn't take all that long and I uh, the stator just slid out in the end, so yeah, they pretty thick windings on that. It's all three phase. But, uh, most interesting part, the piston, and also the parts that actually failed. These are, are the pistons right here, and those are attached to the yokes, which is still up in there. I cannot get those out, I've tried, as you can see. You cut it halfway and basically try and snap it off, tried heating it up, which is why it's all blue. No, nothing worked, so I've just given up there. But uh, these are the two that were on the, the failed yoke. And there's the actual guide block. Completely snapped in half and pulverised. Shattered, basically. And there's these little uh, clamps that go over the, the yoke. And that's what keeps the guide block in, stops it from floating on the crankshaft. And then they're broken and all beaten up. Probably part of that that actually jammed it and just seized the whole thing up, stopped it from spinning. And then, uh, yeah, this piston's very uh, pounded up, it's obviously come loose, it wasn't all that tight. And these are uh, held on by that um, cap screw there. Got a shock and focus on, I need to focus on these a bit better. Yeah, it's a bit better. You can see the, uh, that one snapped off completely, cap screw just let go, and that one just seized in there. And then the yokes just kept pounding it into the, uh, the cylinder ball, basically. That's where half the aluminium flakes and stuff were coming from. The rings are all alright, there's a little bit of scoring on them, but they're, uh, it's all okay. 
the valves are fine on these as well. But yeah, it's just metallic crap on everything. And these are these were the two that were on the, the yoke that was still good. And they're okay. That's what they're supposed to look like. Minus the the light coating of metal powder. Well, that's your suction valve right here. And there's your discharge up in there. And these are your discharge galleries, I think. I'm sure somebody will correct me on that. But yeah. And we got the, uh, that's what the guide block's supposed to look like. Let me focus back. Come on, camera. Yeah, there we go. That's what it's supposed to look like, minus the marks. And that, again, like I said, touches the crankshaft and just oscillates inside the, uh, that yoke frame as it's doing that it just pushes the two pistons it's just one of these on either end and that's what those are meant to look like and even they're still a bit beaten up but, uh, plenty of good bolts off of this we'll hang on to these these are all uh, metric m8s and things so they'll all be useful they're all still all right but, uh, that's pretty much the end of that one it's all scrap metal now fetch a few dollars. That was a Copeland four cylinder radial scotch yoke reciprocating refrigeration compressor. Now in lots of bits. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.